Atomic Adventures. Let's see what we're up to today. Who knows, we might have some fun and even a dance along the way. You'll find us at the start, so let's not delay. Fire up the engine and get in the skies right away. You'll follow the life of Trompolo. Let's start at the beginning and take a view of his life right to the end. Welcome to this personal project that includes flying. But it's not just about his love of flying, it's more about a different type of journey. So what was the inspiration for this random direction change? Well, you can blame his son. Okay, maybe he's just unwittingly responsible. For these videos, as he asked both Tom and his better half, if they would write down a few of their experiences from their past before it's too late. And after the last few years, it also makes total sense to start it as soon as possible. Anyway, you know the type of thing? Those family stories of the past and questions that you wished you'd asked when you had the chance. Asked you to make weird YouTube videos that make little sense at the best of times. Where were we? Yes, that's what I thought. But I can't imagine that anyone would want to spend time trying to read his handwriting on many scraps of paper. Plus his son is worth more than that. So these videos are the result. We appreciate that these videos will probably not be for you, but then again, they're not intended to be. But you're still welcome to stay. That's true. And see Tom in the best of times and worst of times. What the dickens are you on about? Okay, first things first, laddie. And we feel that the best way of starting things off is for me to set the scene. For sure that sounds like a good idea and might save a lot of confusion. They say that life goes in seven year cycles, so that's what we're going to do. We will be covering one of these periods in each video and this one will be reflecting the zero to seven age range. So where did this adventure start? Well, even from an early age, he showed that he loved fun and was often mischievous. And with all that life threw at him, he was adaptable and resilient. And as they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And more of that is to come. But for now, we start at the beginning. About time. As you can see from the image on the tablet that Tom was born and spent the first two years of his life growing up in a small 16th century Tudor cottage. Sounds very quaint. You would think so, but they weren't in a good condition back then and soon condemned and sold for a pound and had to be completely renovated to make them habitable. As you may imagine, he has no memories of this time. Do you know what his first memory was? Yes, Pet, his first memory was of playing and riding a fire engine. And when and where did his sense of adventure start? Well, if we look out to the left, you can see that we are passing a beach where in the early 1960s, the three or four year old Tom was on a caravan holiday at Kessingland when he found himself unattended. And as we will find out, he doesn't fare well if he's bored. So off he went for a stroll and decided to make his way down to the beach where he turned left to see what he could find. In this case, it happened to be a smallish fishing town of Lower Stoff. A small port. No thanks, I'm working. Anyway, back to the tail, he managed to find it approximately three to four miles away. He then spent some time looking around the shops and game arcades until he got peckish and decided it was time he headed back along the beach, back up to the caravan park, ready to eat and get back to his bed for the night. Sweet. There was just one last hurdle to get over. Wasn't there a gate? No, it wasn't that kind of hurdle. It was, in fact, that there were a lot of police around looking for a lost child but as he'd not been lost, he and wondered what all the fuss was about. Did he get in trouble? Not that he could remember. He was just happy that he even got to keep the model Land Rover he'd acquired on the trip. And that was his first solo adventure? Yes, and even at that age, he could find his way home. Just as well, don't think my nerves can take much more of this. That might be the case, but we still have a bit more to mention before we go to the next video. More? What the heck? I know, and to make things easier next time, We've decided that each of these videos should have three main parts to each seven year period. These will be the good, the bad, and the ugly. And don't forget that in life, you only meet the ones who survived. So let's get things rolling with the good. Lower school. On the whole, he had a good feeling about his years at lower school. So he enjoyed the experience? Yes, but even at this age, he found a way of getting out of the lessons he didn't want to do. How did he do that? He had a small container filled with different types of foods to make it look like he'd been sick. What did he use? Vegetable soup and porridge were his firm favourites. And if he wanted to skip a lesson, 
he would simply drop the contents on the floor. And for him, that lesson was over. Couldn't do that too often, though. Yes, he only did it sparingly, and it seems that this was more often than not determined by who the teacher was, rather than which subject was being taught. How far was the school away? Luckily, only a few streets away, and even at that age, he would have to walk himself to and from school. I know it seems incredible nowadays. What was his favourite subject? Strangely, what he liked best at school were the after-school clubs for those children. They called the latchkey kids. Can you explain what a latchkey kid was? Sure, these were kids, in his case, where both parents were working. So a key was left on the end of a piece of string on the inside of the front door, and you would put your hand through the letterbox, grab the string and retrieve the key to let yourself in. So the after-school club was his favourite part of the day? Oh, definitely. As there was little on the TV at that time, so he always stayed in the after-school club where he would watch public information films or science and nature films, and yes, they were real cinema reels, and this is where he learnt more in those 20 or 30 minutes than the rest of the day. He was often the last to leave. And don't forget, in the 1960s there were no videos, YouTube, the internet, or even much on a small black and white TV when it worked. Now on to the bad. The thing he remembered vividly, and the only negative thing at that time, was in a morning assembly when the school headmaster often suddenly jumped off the stage, ran through the rows of children, pushing them to the sides, like Moses parting the Red Sea until he found the person he was after and clout them usually around the head. He also loved giving children the slipper or the cane. Bugger that! Indeed, Tom was lucky, as the only time the headmaster found him with a group of friends were when they throwing paper planes. He was fortunate that at that precise time, he was under a desk retrieving a plane and was not noticed, but the others were taken to his office and beaten. All stick and no carrots. That's very true. Even the police would give you a whack if they didn't like the look or sound of you. Oh, and it felt like any adult could stop you and chastise you at will. I'm not sure they're any better now, except many of them have guns or tasers. I now understand why people of his and future generations lost any respect for authoritative figures. And now we come to the ugly, or should we call it the medical bank? This is a place where he put in a lot of time, and why he got his money's worth out of the NHS. We have to mention now that 99% of the NHS staff are absolutely brilliant, dedicated, hard-working and kind, and saved his life several times. But seeing that when you have over 1,000 medical interactions then, by just doing the maths, but with that 1%, it would mean there were 10 or more negative interactions, but we will be coming to them in good time. But to give you an idea of what we have to come in the future, we have decided that it's time we had a quiz to start things off. So which of these actually happened to him? Was it A, when he drank a bottle of cough medicine, and to get to it, he had to climb onto a lounge chair, onto the seat, up the arm, and onto the headrest, where he was able to reach and open the cupboard to get to the cough medicine? Don't forget these were the days when there were no child proof lids and they made the medicines taste delicious. And as a result, he was off to hospital again to have his stomach pumped. Or B, needing a refreshing drink of water, he went over to the sink. And although he wasn't tall enough to see into it, he was able to take a cup and reach over the edge and put his hand into a bowl and scoop some water out. And only then did he taste the bleach that was in there. And even to this day, he still heaves when he smells bleach. He was a thirsty little bugger, wasn't he? Or C, was it when he was out with his father one day viewing a car, when all of a sudden an Alsatian jumped over a fence and bounded up to him to play? It wasn't being aggressive, just playful, but he wasn't much taller than the dog and it pushed him over? Unfortunately, he was knocked off his feet and hit the back of his head on the pavement and was taken by ambulance to hospital where he spent the next week in hospital with severe concussion. He remembers the dog and the flashing lights of the ambulance but nothing after that. So which one did you go for? Well, in fact, all three are true. I know it sounds like a tale, but wait until you hear the rest. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing them. We will find out more about his life and why he has two premises in life. The first for him, it's about finding a partner to share a journey with. It doesn't mean doing everything together, but the right person will encourage and support him and let him be the person he is. And vice versa, Mike, others prefer to prioritise what they do, but who they do it with isn't that important, which is fine. His only problem with that was when you find that person on your journey is having a secret life. 
And we all know it's the lies that kills you, and not the deed. And the second is about the journey and do you travel or commute. How far do you have to go? Oh, sweetie, it's nothing to do with distance but what journey you're on. Sorry? If it's something you enjoy doing, then it's travelling. And for him, a journey was often more about learning something new and how you can go from knowing nothing to a finished product or skill. What if you're learning, working or travelling in something you don't enjoy? Well, pet, that would be commuting. It's a good thing we like different things, then. It certainly is. Vive la différence. And that's a good place to leave it there for this section anyway. We'll be back soon to cover the years 7 to 14. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. The Life of Tom Ploy is a Fowler Tire production.